I got some here. Really good. How many are ready to hit their destiny? Jesus. There you go. Hallelujah. If you're watching my internet or listening to the audio, welcome. And uh, it's a beautiful day in paradise. Um, if you don't know me, my name is James. I'm Jim Sigis. And I uh, have my wife, Michelle, here. Hi. You know, she gets more applause than I do. I like it. Oh, we love you, too. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm good. But I appreciate you honoring my wife. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect thing. Perfect words are just put down another kind of thing. Hallelujah. We're back to John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. That's your choice. And what's going on in the world? Don't let your hearts be troubled. You are the ruler of your heart. Yeah. Then the Amplified says, Don't let your heart be troubled, agitated, dis or distressed. Amen? Now, that's your assignment. Don't let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. Don't do it. That means sometimes it's going to want to be agitated, distressed, and troubled. Right. That means you have to rule it in. Yes. Hello. I know that when my heart was troubled in prayer, I don't get no traction. Because I'm so self-focused that I just spin my wheels. And he's like, you can't bring that into the front room. What? You know, did that poor me thing don't work with him? Mm -hmm. You know, faith works. Hello. Right. So things are going to want to agitate you, but you got to say no. I'm going to choose joy. <laughs> I'm going to choose what? <clears throat> I'm going to choose to be happy. I've been sad. I've been happy. I like happy better. But it, it's a choice. And the, and the question is, what's your temperance, or what is your your ability? I mean, how hard of a situation can you go through and still be happy and maintain your joy, and not let your heart be troubled? Because you want to think about that. Because you want to come to a place where you guard your peace, you guard your relationship, so that no matter what distressing comes against you. You're still in the throne room. You see, nothing can pluck you out of the will of God. Amen? So there's that place of learning how to feed your heart, how to strengthen your heart, get yourself built up in Him, so that you can take and guard and keep perfect peace in everything you do. Hello. So he says, don't let your heart be troubled. You know, another place that says this is, of course, we know in 1426, but the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. Oh, really? The Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send my name. Who, what's he going to do? He's going to help me. He's going to be an intercessor for me. He's going to counsel me. He's going to be my counselor, my helper, my intercessor, my advocate, my strengthener, my standby. Hallelujah. I'm going to come to know him living in me. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will cause you to re recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my own peace I now give bequeath to you not as the world gives do I give to you do not let your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed 
Do not permit yourselves to be fearful, intimidated, and cowardly and unsettled. So notice this, do not permit yourselves to. So you got to know that you have to make some choices and you know bumps in the road are going to come along and you want to learn to stay built up, unmovable, unshaking, abounding in his love. You know, Paul said, neither can height nor depth or anything pull me out of the love of God. Hallelujah. So you want to come to a place where you're fortified, you're strengthened in Him to the degree that nothing can pull you out of that unity or that union with Him. Yes. Regardless of what goes on on the outside, you have peace as your umpire. And if it starts to pull on you, you want to you know, the things of the world, you got to get back into it. You can call it your hidey hole where you hide away in the Lord. And you take and get your strength back. Amen? Because he's looking to build us up so that we can receive our inheritance. And you know, every time the seed is sown and the word is sown, the enemy is going to immediately come and try and steal it out of your life. It's going to keep you from, from receiving this new level that Father has for you. So then if he starts throwing stuff at you, and you just got to, sometimes you just got to bark at it and stay in the pace and say, no, uh, I can adapt. I'm strong. I mean, I got the creative of the heavens and earth living on the inside of me. Amen? You got who living on the inside of you? Oh, you're a team. What? <laughs> you're teaming up with who? If God be for you, who or what? Or can anything be against you? It might come against you, but as long as I have the shield of faith and quench the fiery darts, it can't steal my joy. And if it's a truth that I need to apply and change, that's okay. At the same time, we're going to stay in our peace. We're going to stay in our joy. Amen? Hallelujah. So you got to come to a place where you choose to stay in the midst of adversity, stay in that perfect peace. So you believe in and adhere to and trust and rely on God. Believe in, adhere to and trust and rely on me. So really what he's saying is, regardless of what you're going through, you can swing with me and I'm going to bring you through. And you know, the, he says that with every temptation, he does what? Makes a way of escape. So Paul says, now that we are more than conquerors through him who strengthens us. So if it's him who strengthens us, let's not forsake the gathering of ourselves together but come into that place where you can get strengthened. And if you're not doing it at home, you better get in the Word at home so that when you come to assembling yourselves together, you can impart something to strengthen somebody else. Right. Because it's really in your laying your life down, in your giving is where you preserve and find your life. Hello. Because whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you gotta learn how so you, when you need a when you need healing, go pray for somebody who needs healing. That's right. Amen. Because when, what happens is you get your eyes off of yourself, off the situation, and onto someone else's need, and then Father can zap you because you got your focus off of you, and you and you're creating a vacuum because you're sowing into the room you need to to read. Right. Because whatsoever man saw that shall be also read. So there's that place of, of coming to know, adhere to, and trust in, and, and rely on me, Jesus, or the Word, where your strength comes from. Remember, we're teaching on the Word is it goes forth in its own inerrant power. It's a ball of light. See, the Spirit of Truth is here. Holy. I thank you, Jesus. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is here right now. And what he's wanting to do is he's wanting to part his strength in full measure into each one of us. 
Hallelujah. All of our cares up off of us on him for he cares for us. And then us, you know, like newborn calves bringing forth the yeah. coming out of the stall. Happy as a lark. Amen. So don't look at the situation. If you're having a hard time with something, look at him. Get his wisdom. Get his promises activated. Adhere to, trust in, and rely on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's look at Psalms 37 for a moment. Do you know what it says? It's 34 or 37. 37. All right. He says, Fret not yourselves because of evil doers. Neither be envious against those who work unrighteous. That which is not upright or in right standing with God. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a herb, as a green herb. You know, the book of James says, grass is as flesh, or flesh is as grass. It grows up and it withers. You know, one of the most precious commodity that a human being has is time. You only get to spend it once. Yeah. Jesus. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident. See, the whole thing is, what's the enemy trying to do when he throws junk at you? Steal your confidence. Yeah. But you've got it. Holy bam. <laughs> See, the confident ones. This is the confident. So we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Amen? Yeah. So, trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord. We're in Psalms 37, verse 3. And do good. And do good. So shall you dwell in the land and, and feed securely on his faithfulness. And truly you shall be fed. So what are you going to be fed with? His strength. Amen? So this is delight yourself also in the Lord. How many know that when you're fed, it's easy to delight? Amen? Yeah. It's easy to what? Delight yourself in the Lord. Of course, that's what Thessalonians says, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So what's that mean? Rejoice. I like it. <laughs> There's some joy. Then it says, and rejoice. I like it. <laughs> and so there's a place of learning to rejoice no matter what you're going through. Just have a, when the enemy throws everything he has at you, have a praise attack. It totally takes your focus off the things of this life and you put your focus on him. And everything falls into perspective. Amen. That's the next verse. Delight yourselves also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. Then what's He saying? Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each of your each care of. Your load on him, trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Oh, really? So, what were the keys here? One was fret not, trust, lean on, rely on, be confident in the Lord, then delight yourself, and then commit your way. And he will bring it to pass. Oh, really? I think they got, these guys got it together here, huh? 
What's he talking about? Trust, delight, commit, and he will bring it to pass. Amen? And he will make your uprightness and your right standing with God go forth as the light. Your justice and your right as the shining sun of the new day. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way because the man who brings wicked devices to pass. So if you trust, you get to delight, you get to, then you can commit. What happens when you trust? You lean on, you quit looking at the situation, you look at him, then, then that's gonna cause you to delight yourself in, in the Lord. And then you know that he's got it because when you delight yourself, you're in a place of worship, you're in a place of praise, you're releasing heaven into the situation just by delighting. Hello. And then that enables you to be strengthened even more. And then you will, that will cause you to commit your way to the Lord because you know he's got you because you're in his presence. Amen. Trust, you know. And then he says, and he will make your uprightness. And then the next one was rest in the Lord. So, so there's that place of leading on, not on your own understanding, but acknowledging okay. him and trusting him in all of his ways. And then delighting in the fact you can trust him. And then since you're trusting, now you got to commit and not be moved by what you're seeing. And then you get to be still and rest and know that he's got you. Hallelujah. But to do this, you got to come to a place where you cease from fretting. Yeah. Being agitated. Do not let your heart be troubled. Yeah. Amen? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if we go over to Isaiah 58. It talks about, is not this fast of chewing, chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness and that you break every enslaving yoke. Now, it's the enslaving yokes that want to agitate you. And so sometimes you got to go a little deeper and get a little fasting going on and humble yourself and seeking him with your whole heart. Then he says, what's going to happen? You know, once you get your eyes off of you, and begin to feed the poor, take rid the money out of the hand of the wicked, take care of somebody else other than yourself. He says, then he will begin to lead you, guide you. He'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob. You'll be like a well-watered garden. Your bones will wax strong. Your bones. Your healing, your restoration, and the power of a new life will spring forth speedily. Then he says, the devil will cause you to ride on the high places of the earth. So sometimes it takes a little more to, to get yourself out of that agitated mode. But there's a place of your healing and your restoration and the power of a new life will spring forth speedily. It says your bones will wax strong. That means you'll fix your teeth. Hello? It means Isaiah 58, 60 or 14. 58. 58. Isaiah 58. 6 through 14. And then he says, I will cause you to ride on the high places of earth. That means you're going to be above all that stuff that's been agitating you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing that you do is you're laboring to enter into the rest where it's, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and you can have the joy of the Lord to strengthen you. <laughs> so you don't have to look at it. Because you know he's got it. And you're not walking in hope anymore because you labored to enter into the place where you delight. His anointing came. You, you pray and you worship. And then you can speak to it. And when you're not, when, his, when, when you're in his presence, and you know that he hears you. First John says that this is the confidence that we have in him, chapter 5. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. 
So there's that place of when you're in that worship, you're in that intimate relationship, and you know that he hears you, you can have whatsoever you demand. So now that's a place of pressing in in your prayer time and praying and fasting. Abide in me. You know, you go pray in the Holy Ghost so the faith that's in your heart comes up and illuminates your mind. Dries out the doubt and unbelief. And by words abide you, you shall ask, Greek word demand, or the, the really, the Greek word means to demand. And whatsoever you shall demand of my name, and really I can say, whatsoever you shall demand of my name according to my will, it shall be given done to you or given to you. And when you know it's God's will, sometimes you got to break the agitating yoke and the stuff that, so that you can get your faith level up and so that you can enter into the rest knowing that Father's got it. So that you can lean up to your own understanding, but you can trust, you can acknowledge. Amen. You can commit. You can know that he's got you. You know that he's going to bring it to pass. He knows that we're just getting started. <laughs> and your best is yet to come. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> and Amy just tries to throw this stuff at you. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> Because you can live in a bliss. Oh, do you mean to tell me the Bible says that joy alone is my strength? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not laughing at any of those I better get strength enough a little bit. <laughs> Serve that gift that's in you. Come on. Amen. Especially when it's the devil throwing garbage at me. It don't matter. Everything's subject to my tongue. What? Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said? Everything is subject to your tongue. My tongue. I, you know, there's, there's this guy in the Bible. The name is James. He believed the tongue was rudder of his ship. He believed the tongue was rudder of his life. Oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> and that the, the, the voice in, in heaven and hell were voice, act, voice activated. <laughs> voice activated. What? Yeah, heaven and hell are both, both voice activated. Yes. Agree with one or the other. Choose, yeah. choose some of you what you want to agree with, then you get what you got. Yeah. And if you look at your life, you've already been agreeing with one or the other, so now you got to change your agreement and get rid of the, the, yeah. the fear-based covenants and take on the, the faith-based covenants so that you don't let your heart be troubled anymore. Yeah. So you don't let it be agitated. So you can walk above the cares of this life. They're trying to steal your joy, steal your authority, steal your confidence in who he made you to be. You're a sound living God. The creator of the heavens and earth lives in your belly. Because out of your belly flows rivers of living creative power, but this he spoke of the Holy Ghost. I know I twisted that scripture. And for you, you, you know, King James people, if any man throws let him come and be and drink, and out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Holy Ghost that those that believe should receive. Amen? Hallelujah. But he really, really would have said creative power if he, they had the understanding to grasp it because that's what he flowed in. And out of his belly, out of that baptism that Jesus got, which is the same one you got, he had signs, wonders, and miracles following him everywhere he went. Bam, have a miracle. Totally adjusted. Bam, holy. Hallelujah. Did you know that you can have super weight and supernatural weight loss with, with I thank you, Jesus, that I, I'm in the perfect way? How about I thank you, Jesus, I'm in perfect health? I thank you, Father, my body is totally detoxed perfectly. I thank you that all my cells walk in unity. None of them are rebellious. <laughs> Did you know that by faith one understands the whole world? was framed by the word of God? Did you know that your world is being framed by what you say and what you agree with? I'm not agreeing with them things that, that they speak about me. I agree with what my daddy say about me. My daddy say, I, I, 
Be my family are healed. Hallelujah. Yes. Me and my family are on, on fire. Yes. And we're just getting lit. There's a Holy Ghost outpouring. Hallelujah. Yes. Pyromaniacs are coming on the scene in America. Oh, God. Lighting the glory, releasing the glory of God in every city. Amen. What am I talking about? Normal and our tea on the tea. <laughs> What's yeah. that? Yeah. Normal Christianity. <laughs> Oh, you mean to tell me the priest of the family? Oh, so you're the high priest of your family? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You mean I have authority over all that stuff? Absolutely. <laughs> Glory to God. So what are we going to do? We're going to frame up our families. We're going to frame up everybody we know into the glory of God. See, your world is to be framed. Now, how about Phoenix? Am I going to agree with, or let's say when you go over to Las Vegas, am I going to, you know, like we did some meetings over there one year, and this, this gal had on our van, repent, you sinners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you know what? They can't change until you start calling things that are not as though they are. Yeah. And loving them as if they're perfect. And then you'll melt your heart and pull them out of that stuff. But if you condemn them in the midst of what they're doing, yeah. not, you're not giving them the strength to come out. They ain't coming out. They ain't coming out. <laughs> so you got to learn how to call things that are not as though they are in your own life and frame your own life up in unity with the will of God for your life. And whatever that is, get after it. Calling things that are not as though they are. But, so now if I mix that with, and you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. free from what? All the lies of the enemy of being framed in his kingdom when you're really framed in the kingdom of the Lord. So the truth sets you free from all the lies of the enemy that's been coming against you. That has locked you into the realm of the natural, locked you in a, you know, a works mentality of having to work by the sweaty or brown. I mean, that was the law. You know, that was Adam and Eve got stuck in that mode. Then, of course, later, then everybody got a little out of hand. So then the lock, the penetrucks come, the lock came. And now the dispensation of grace. Now think about this because it's all about the love of God. Melting away your works mentality. You're what? You, that you have to do it all in your own strength. Because you're a spirit being. So if the truth is going to set you free from thinking you have to manage your whole life by yourself. That's right. Because right. he says, what did we read there in John 14? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and the Father will send my name. He shall lead you. He shall guide you. He shall treat you. He shall train you. He'll bring all to your remembrance everything I've said unto you. Amen? So, know that Father is wanting to build you up and cause you to come to a place where you are untouchable for the enemy. Hello. Jesus said the devil comes but had no place in me. In other words, I have no covenants with him. I have no agreement with him. I don't have any areas of my life where I've acknowledged that he could touch me. Did you hear that? That's right. Hello? Because where we're going, you're going to have to be fortified to the degree that you are an untouchable of the enemy. Can you see how the devil's in the whole, in the whole United States mad at us? What do we say about that? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when you talk to him a lot, well, look down. Yeah. Because he's under your feet. Yeah. What? <laughs> and you got to get your mind renewed to the fact he is under your feet. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Who will go to that place? People sing about it, but do they, do they believe it? 
Somebody wrote a song about it. Why do you think the Lord gave the church a song about it? You gotta get the mind renewed to the fact that the devil's under your feet. And if you let them up head high, that's when you get agitated. <laughs> what are you talking about, devil? Desist your maneuvering. All right? Because I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Not a doubter. Cause I wanna don't wanna do it without her. So I'm not ever gonna be a doubter. Cause I don't wanna be without her. <laughs> Because you can, you can pay the price and fix anything. You can have faith for it. The Bible, Bible says all things are possible to those that are agitated. Believe. So those that simply believe. All things are possible. Possible. Possible, then all things become factual. Factual. How do things become factual? How did Father do it? How did your older brother do it? How did become? How did Apostle Paul become the one that writes them? How did he become a living epistle written of God? Father spoke words and pegged him into his destiny. He was in total disobedience. So regardless of what the situation looks like, say you got someone out killing Christians today, cutting heads off. Can you look past the sin and see the gem and speak life into it and peg him into the destiny? No matter what's going on in your life, can you look at those around you and speak life and peg them into yes, destiny because good. you learn to do what? Trust. trust. Lean not your own understanding, yeah. but trust, commit, delight, and rest. Yes. Knowing that he's got it. So the whole thing with every is, is, Ishmael in your life or things that ties you to the realm of the natural, you got to take and get geared up and get underneath it and, and get the word in you and delight yourself until Father, you know, and really what, pray, what your prayer language does is that you're praying in the spirit and it brings you in to the throne room of God, basically, if you're going in and out. Yeah. If you haven't learned to just stay there, holy. But then, then when the anointing is there, then you can speak to it, speak to those things and, and reframe them into Father's perfect will for, for them. So if Father speaks to the apostle or Saul and pegs him into his destiny and he, and he becomes a living epistle written of God. And then what's he do? He writes down what's written on his heart and he sends out letters. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. See, that's a book writer. Yeah. The Living Epistle. Yeah. <laughs> the word really written on your heart. I mean, that's what that's what Paul did. The Lord took and it wrote on the tablets, ta tablets of his heart. Out of the Old Testament. And he wrote down what Father wrote on his heart. And he sent letters. He sent books. It changed eternity. Hello. 
Oh my gosh. So how many know there's books in there? See, you're, you're called to be a book read of all men. Yeah. You're, you're living epistles written of God. And every word he writes on your heart is written with his power. And that power of the word becomes <clears throat> attached to you in your thinking. And now anytime you act on that revelation, it works. <clears throat> and it holds you stationary in that power. And what Father did as an intercessor, he spoke to the Apostle Paul. Paul received the word that pegged him and it framed him into the destiny that Father had for him. You have dreams for people around you. In intercession, you can speak life and peg them into their destinies. That's right. Yeah. By the word of God. Now, if you get off and do it in your own strength, then that's like witchcraft and it brings pressure rather than liberty. So you want to learn to, to delight yourself in the Lord until the anointing comes, until faith comes, and you speak out of that as He directs you. And then that's when you become an instrument of God to release His love, His goodness, and His grace. Hallelujah. And so I could get agitated, or I could not thank you, Jesus. Lord. <laughs> I mean, my Bible said to rejoice the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Amen. I know if I'm not rejoicing, I lost my strength. Because <laughs> 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 I've been drinking down in Joe's place. Every night and every day, I repent. I've been drinking down at Tom's place every night and every day. <laughs> I know, you want me to flip it. I've been drinking down at God's living room every night and every day. I get drunk on my father's new wine. <laughs> Can you hear him? Come away with me. I want you all to myself. Come away with me. I don't want you left on the shelf. <laughs> Come away with me. I have so much for you to do. Come away with me. And you'll never be blue. <laughs> so be so happy you can't contain it <laughs> you'll be sappy and others <laughs> will maintain it because <laughs> what you got is for giving away <laughs> that you can make their life into a brand new day Others might think you're whacked, but you know you're not a quack. <laughs> because your father broke the devil's back <laughs> with the blood of Jesus and was shed on Calvary for all to come into perfected liberty. So come on into that special place of his greater grace. Because he's wanting to pick up the pace. Yeah. So right. <laughs> as you look at his face, you will see him as he is and how you are. Because he made you in his likeness so you go very far. <laughs> and all that he has for you to do. And when you come to the, own, the end of your own strength, he will quicken you too. 
and bring you the rest of the way. Yeah. And you'll know you hit that brand new day. <laughs> it won't matter what anybody else ever had to say, because those words are gone and you're framed up in his. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that father. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, watch my internet bless you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I command you healed right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. Paul said, I believe therefore I've spoken. I like that. I do too. <laughs> Lord, get them. There's three couch potatoes. Bam. How are they? Three what? Couch potatoes. I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> they do call it God's living room. <laughs> yes. Yes. That means there's living in the room. Hallelujah. So, say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. For not, for letting my, for, forgive me for letting my heart be agitated. And looking at the, the things of this life. And taking my focus off of you. Take me, use me. Strengthen me. Teach me to delight myself in you and everything I do. <laughs> Cause me to not let anything at all steal my joy. Because it's your joy in me. And I'm no longer going to give it up. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Thank you for cleansing me from all agitations and all distress in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. <laughs> and everybody shouted. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. There's just everything about your name. Sing it. Jesus. There's just everything about that name. Master. Savior. Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. There's a word claim. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord was talking to me tonight about um, Deuteronomy 29, 29. Secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And... So there's like mysteries in God, but like how many of you know he hides himself for us to find him? So if there's things hidden, uh, he's going to have us find him. 
and he wants us to seek him and those who seek him with their whole heart will find him the word says so there's different if you think about the mysteries like with it says first to the Jew and then to the Gentile and we're coming into that time where like all Lord was telling me like it's the culmination of ages like Jim talks about the climax of the ages that everything is going to culminate and so like what does a story have it's got it's got like a good beginning and then it hooks you in and then it grabs you in and then it's got that climax and then it's got the perfect ending mm -hmm. and that's just, it sounds simple, but that's what the Lord was talking to me tonight, is that he's got the whole world, like, in his hands. And he's got, like, his mysteries are for us to find out. And there's so many things in the word that seem like a mystery, but God is making them plain in these days for those who seek him. And then for those who don't know, he speaks in parables so that, so that you'll draw nearer to him. And you'll kind of go, well, what does that mean, Lord? What does that meanest? So I'm trying to find this other scripture. I think I marked like the wrong page. Because <laughs> I was too busy. I'm just so cute. <laughs> okay, me... Ephesians 1 9, he made known to us. The mystery of his will according to his kind intention which he purposed in him so the mystery of his will is really in Jesus Christ like God sent his son the perfect sacrifice that he would be the propitiation of for our sins if we don't if we don't take that propitiation and bank on it then it's like having a gift in your bank account but you never pulled the money out and you never, or like a trust fund or something, and you never really knew it was there, so you didn't use it. And, but when you start working the mysteries of God, when you start saying, thank you, God, you, you know, starting with basics, like you died for me, you rose again, and I apply the forgiveness of sins, I apply the forgiveness of the cross, for every area, like Jim was talking about, the cares of this life, the cares of this world, the our health, our healing, our peace of mind, to have truth, the belt of truth on, to have the shield of faith, to have our feet buckled. You know, when we start applying that, it's like we our whole day is like supercharged and you've eaten your Wheaties for the day. Okay. And you can tell, you know, when you walk in peace, when I walk in peace and something tries to pull me out of the peace, I can feel it right away. You know, I can feel what the other person is feeling. And God wants us to know him like that so that we can get that sense of, God, here you are. Here's where you want my life today. Here's what you're speaking to me today. And hit that mark of intimacy with him continually. And to be ever abounding in love and, and his grace where we're in this trajectory for intimacy and worship. And that's what he was showing me um, today is, and during my prayer time, is he wants us continually abiding in him and having that anointing where we walk. And today I got like a little bit shook. I got like a, of, you know, it's kind of what I was talking about the other day with clutter. And so the Lord, you know, was, he's, there's things in my life that I need to, I need to clean up. And, um, like I said earlier this week, 
I, I fell off a ladder and I got hurt Ouch. and um, hurt my C3 to my C7, mm. but God led me to get the right help to untangle it so that I wasn't paralyzed, long story short. And, um, and so I'm still walking that out, but then in the meantime, I was doing this whole Pilates program six days a week you know, to work with, to get, um, at my age, you know, with the hormones and everything and to get everything balanced. But then it was like my plans fell apart <laughs> when I fell off that ladder. And so then today, you know, we got some labs done and I didn't like what I saw. <laughs> and, you know, because I've been, I really have been trying and, but it's not, it's not, um, you know, like I got, I have a Christian practitioner and she said that it's, she said, Michelle, it's just a snapshot. So like for her, she's like, this is just a picture of your health. It's, and when I look at it and I, you know, I'm the type of person I see the red flags. I'm like, we have to fix this. This is not, you know, but how many know when you've been trying to fix things and you're seeking God, but it's not right. It's hard because you have to just go. Okay, God, I'm going to trust you. And that's like what I was talking about the other day, like with the clutter, when the Lord said, you know, about the clutter and the discerner with the Holy Spirit and the sword of the Lord. And so he was telling me today, I am going forth. You know, he's the discerner. And so we must submit to him, resist the devil. The devil has to flee. The enemy has to flee. So any attack, you know, we go through trauma, the fall, can bring a trauma but you have to get right back into trust again trusting the Lord and that's like walking out the different mysteries where it's like we don't always understand why or how or what and we have pieces of it where you know we can go okay that this was not God this was the enemy this was an attack but then to get back to the place where God wants us and that's what I've been walking out is just trusting God like okay God you're gonna you're gonna my old man would want to work it out you know what I mean and tonight I had this vision of curtains where the curtains you know God like was unhooking all these curtains and he was showing me like I'm gonna hang the curtains where I want the curtains and like so when we want our life we, we go well I just like it like just looks so nice you know we get settled but right now God is like taking and he's shaking things and yes. he's going I, I want it cleaned out I, springtime cleaning out with the old and with the new and we have to we have to adjust we have to go okay so now what Lord and you know it's what's so good is like what God was showing me is like he's got the answer before I even ask before you even ask he has the answer and that's how good he's been to me like leading me and it but when you follow the Lord you feel like you're part way we see in part and you're like okay I'm like trusting and it feels so big but when you look back at the wisdom of God you're like he had my hand the whole time Come on. and he was bringing me through and, and in the process, he changed me to let go of those old things and those old ways that got shook up where the curtain got taken off the rod. And then it's better than ever before. But we don't see that always in the process. And so that's what Jim was talking about and singing through. And he's just like, it's really going to be okay. And it is going to be okay. Cause, because God says it's going to be okay. But he wants to take like all those striving ways and all those ways of pushing through and pressing through like, you know, I'm in a war this way. And he's like, no, you're going to rest this way. You're going to rest and I'm going to be your front and rear guard and I'm going to tell you where to go. And you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> And America is at that place where we don't have a choice, you know. We were talking today when we picked up 
our this we're getting this purified water and we picked it up and then we met our retired police officer and then the guy we get the water from and they were all talking about the state of America and the you know like I'm from Minneapolis where where everything ground zero you know with George Floyd and the riots and how right now like a lot of liberal um, judges are they're doing catch and release and so cars get stolen and the day after my dad died of COVID Thanksgiving and the Lord said don't I'm taking him home um, so we walked through that whole process um, and then the next day we went to um, my stepmoms to help her with the bills and funeral all the arrangements that she felt overwhelmed with and so my sister and I were there and and we were talking and it was right at this healing point she was she was really giving me understanding like into my dad because my dad was like well he thought when you posted something about um, the danger of vaccines that you were pointing your finger at him and I said I would never do that like that's not my personality anyways I said I'm a, I want the truth to come out I was vaccine injured you know with nursing healthcare vaccines and I had to learn how to detox and all of that so my heart is just to say hey are we reading labels are we looking at what is in and you know I would not put aborted uh, fetal DNA in my body because it, it crosses the blood brain barrier where God made that a sacred it's one of the mysteries God made that sacred like our whole this whole area is closed and a lot of people say the Holy Spirit dwells in that area where our backbone and our brain all the way through that area um, so you know I just yeah, I feel like that's, you know, an area where, like, we really need to read the labels and we really need to know. And so I'm just like, you know, we need to be informed. And it's time not to be sheeple about anything, you know, anything. But all these different uh, media formats have, have made it so you can't talk and you can't even debate. You can't have an honest conversation and we can't talk about anything that's inflammatory and they make everything inflammatory and then bad seem good and good seem bad and you you know this kind of culture it's like you can't say anything or you're gonna upset someone and you know you can't families can't live like that right it's like our family we have an open discussion like with with my kids, I say, you know, if you ever think something's not fair, let's talk about it, and you show me in the word, <laughs> and we'll discuss it. <laughs> Seriously, like, like the Bible says, like, come, let us reason together, mm -hmm. and iron sharpens iron, and the sparks fly upward, and faithful are the wounds of a friend, because we tell each other the truth. We might not always initially like, like when Jim tells me to be happy, and I just got these results and I'm like, oh, you know, and I, all these emotions are coming up of what I've tried to do and feel like I failed and where am I at in this? I might not like that, but as it settles in, I'm like, he's right. And I need to keep my worship and I need to stay closed. And when you walk in peace, it's like staying dressed. And when you get in out of your emotions out of out of a bad report it's like letting the enemy come and steal your mantle steal your what you're dressed in and you can feel the peace come off right you, it's like having your crown tipped sideways you know and the bible actually talks about don't lose your crown Amen. right it does so like a lot of what i'm saying is like practical but and real because that's how i am I'm not going to change. I'm not Jim's gift. I am my gift to the body of who Jesus made. And that's that's what we all need to be. And so I want freedom for the whole body because I want to see everybody's gift come out. And so when I talk about these things, 
what it's doing is it's like bringing a release for everybody to say, hey, it's okay. Like if we if we don't if we don't start moving through these things, because there's mysteries that shouldn't be mysteries that the church culture has made like a mystery. That's right. And then we get kicked out of churches or we suffer through things. And God is going, I am your father and I am a good family man and I never kicked you out and I never did that to you and I would never do that. Actually, I'm the one that helps you find your mismatched socks in the morning. <laughs> I'm the one that I'm the one that helps hold everything together. Like, wow, why am I getting a bad rap here when I am so good and so full of love and so full of guidance for you? And so the GPS system, someone like moved the GPS system in the culture of the church. And so God said, I'm bringing a culture changing angel. Hallelujah. We need some culture changing because it's, it's all in the word. And if you don't line up with the, the word, it says spirit and truth. If it doesn't line up, we have to sharpen some, have some flint and some sparks flying. But people are too afraid to let the sparks fly and let the chips fall where they may and let Jesus Christ be Lord. Let Jesus be the head and, and walk and, and move, you know. So they take the head out, grieve the Holy Spirit, and make a monster, you know, seeker sensitive and these different things where, you know, you can have a 30 minute service. <laughs> But you know what? God says, like, don't let the Holy Spirit leave the room. Like, we should always, when the Holy Spirit moves, how many of you know in prayer meetings or in, in meetings like this, the Holy Spirit culminates and he, we, it's like we worship Jesus. They work as a trinity together and we move in unity to see the Lord uplifted. And then the Holy Spirit is happy. When Jesus is glorified, when the Father is glorified. And, and you better believe, that the word says that the Father and Jesus and the angels are jealous for the Holy Spirit. And they say, do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed. And it says, keep the unity of faith. And if you have an offense with someone, before you even go to the altar, confess it. Don't go to Sister Sue and Mrs. Jones and tell them, go to that person first. And that's what I taught my kids. I had a big poster on the door because they'd be like, Mom, <laughs> did you go to him first? Because God doesn't like a tattletale. He wants us to go to that person. And that's how we learn. And, and the Bible says treat people actually with modesty when they sin and teach them. Right? Because the because when you're a new baby or you're learning in an area, you might not know, oh, this isn't what the Lord likes, or this is this is how God would want it done. And um so that's we were having this conversation. I thought it was a really good conversation. Some of it was negative because of what's going on in America today at when we were getting the water. But um I thought it was really good because on a church level, God wants us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. And God is saying there's reasons why we're at where we're at today. And um, the police officer is saying, you know, we might need a revolution. And I said, you know, we definitely need a reformation in the church. We need revival in the church. Revival is what's going to save the whole world. Renewing the minds of the people and having waves after waves of healing is going to release the prisoner. It's going to set people free. It's going to set the captive free. Having people that are having so many mental health issues now, you know, taking guns away from good people and and letting the criminals go free, catch and release, and letting them have the guns. How many know that's not a very good idea? <laughs> 
It's not, and I'm not for anyone being shot. Like I, I'm like, you know what? You, but if you break in someone's house, you might have to sit down and listen to Jesus. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Before the cops get there, it's we have to, you know. And, and the police officer was talking about we can't be fearful, you know. And um, it was a good talk, and he was very conservative. He was naming off conservative theolo theologians, and we were naming off <laughs> more revival things. But And I was in the middle bringing that, come let us reason together, and what does God want to do? And it was, it was really good. But so there's some culture changing that God wants to do, and he wants to set us free to go... I remember when the Lord told me, Michelle, I want you to go worship and dance in church. And I'm like, I can't dance in church. I was dancing at home all the time. I was worshiping, meeting God. I was getting raptured at home. Amen. But I'm like, I'm not supposed to do this at church. <laughs> and so I began to, God said, it's my church. And so you need to obey me. That's right. And he, so he began to break fear man off of me during that time and 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 to to say you know what don't look at their faces say what i want you to say and um and then i will take care they're my people and if you need correction i'm big enough to correct you and bring other people to you know to bring correction but if we just stay quiet all the time and you know and there's a roar in us how many know like it, things are never, they're not going to happen. Okay. It's like, the, and there's so many gifts that need to come out that God wants to, that's, he's like, it's so, my body's so beautiful. And we haven't even seen the half of it yet. Um, and it's because we need to make a culture conducive to like God's living room where people can get healed and people can feel safe and people can move out in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And God's big enough. I mean, how many think God is big enough to bring revival and to work it all out? Yeah, he is. And he's He's going to, and he says, "There's right now is the time of revealing of mysteries where he's going to bring the end home from the beginning. And he's going to open up the mysteries. He's going to bring the Jew and the Gentile. He's going to open up things so that people can grow. And, it, and some things are going to be a quick work. Because, you know, when you've been sitting in, for stagnant in a long time, but then your heart opens up to Jesus in this way, just as like, Lord, like, I've been waiting on you a long time. And here, and then it's just like, wow. You know, like when you got saved, did God just, did people just start saying around you, you're a totally different person. You're like, what happened? You know, what happened? My family said that to me. What happened to you? I'm like, yeah, I cried out to Jesus. He came and sat by my bed. I said, God, I know you're real. And he said, be at peace. Go to sleep now. Mm -hmm. You know, I was driving through a construction zone. And it felt like the rapture had happened. But I was Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I didn't know about being saved. Amen. I, we, we were taught the whole time, well, you're good enough. Mm -hmm. And... um. I had a backslider witnessing to me saying, well, you can't, you're not good enough. And you need to stop saying these rote prayers and you need to really just give your heart to Jesus. Wow. And so I was driving through construction and, and I, I, I wanted to peel this feeling off of me. It was conviction. It was like, I want to get this off of me and I want to get back to regular life. What has <laughs> what's on me and um i looked at the person next to me i said are you feeling the same thing i am and tears were coming down their eyes and yep i said get me to church now and that's all i knew how to say and we went to the church and the church was locked and i was like how can a church be locked what people need him i need relief who's gonna who's gonna help me so there was no one there, so I went home. And I started to feel like we had records at that time. And it was like, I started to feel like I need to stop listening 
to my records. And I was like, but there's only like old people music that I know that's Christian music. <laughs> and I was like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do, I don't, I don't wanna do this. But I, so I started having an internal struggle and there was a list going on in my mind of things that I would need to get rid of. And in the midst of that, it was like, God's love would just arrest me. Like, you don't have to figure all this out. This is not yours to figure out. This is like wrong to think. It was my Catholic upbringing that was like, you know, you have to fix it. And, you know, we can have shards of that, you know, remaining sometimes where we want to fix. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so during that time then I was like, well, that didn't really happen. That thing in the car was an episode of mental lapse. And I'm saying no. <laughs> and that didn't happen. And I heard this voice in my head say, well, if it didn't happen, then why do you have two reliable witnesses? Me, the Lord, and the person in the car. I was like, whoa, you're right. And the Bible talks about having a witness all the time to confirm the word. So I knew. I was like, and then the warfare came. And then the demons started manifesting in my room. I felt like if I got off my bed, I was a teenager. I was like, but I felt like if I got off my bed, something was going to pull me from underneath the bed and I was going to disappear. <laughs> and it was the most irrational feeling. And every time I'd read my Bible, like I said the other night, I would fall asleep. But at the same time, I was like, God must be like so worthy and so worth it for this stuff to go on because this is just crazy out of the world warfare so I cried out and I said I didn't know how to cry out to Jesus at that time I didn't know how to say even Jesus you know because of my upbringing so I said God I know you're real and I know you can help me help me help me you know and um Jesus came and sat by my bed and he put his hand on my leg and for the first time I felt the love of God so strong I didn't know the love of God. I grew up in a bad neighborhood. I told you guys the other night, I had defense mechanisms. <laughs> and all my defense mechanisms were apprehended at that time when that love filled me through that hand that touched me. And he said, don't open your eyes, just be at peace and go to sleep now. And those love, I was like, my eyes were opened. I was like, how could I ever go to sleep now with this love? I don't want to sleep. I want to know you. I want to learn who you are. Like you're worth everything. And you could take this out of my room. And, you know, it was like gone like that. Jesus appeared and everything was like, it felt like blooming gardens everywhere. You know, where that room felt really dark before. And I felt like there were cloths that were going to choke me, you know. And um, so that's how I got saved. And then years later, the Lord told me that driving in that construction zone would be like the end times and that I got saved that way for a purpose mm. and that it was going to be like that in the last days and that there were going to be lighthouses of prayer and worship oh, yeah. when people wouldn't be able to get to a church like how the church was locked but that we're the temple. We are the kingdom of God lives within us and the church is yeah. us. We are Jesus manifest. We are his body and that people are going to find us Man, from the yeah. glow and the love and the miraculous happening yeah, yeah. and they're going to go get this off of me. I feel this like, you know, and at the same time it felt like the love of God had left the earth and I was like, I don't want to be left behind in this hole <laughs> where it's like all oh, evil, you know. And how could God do that? It was construction. There was nothing I saw but cranes and construction but the Lord put that feeling of the fear of the Lord you know which is the beginning of wisdom and to and to fear him and to love him and he took you know I got rid of my rosary I got rid of everything and you know I already still in church was ripping off ever since I was a baby I would rip the the um little idols off that 
that I got pinned on me, you know, for protection. I was like, I knew that it does not protect me. And it was Jesus. But I didn't, I had still clouds and veils over my eyes. Like I didn't know how to say it. I just wouldn't go to confession. Or if I went to confession, I would say something fake. Not fake, but I would have my list. But I was like, I'm not telling a priest my heart. That's right. I'm telling God my heart. And I'm going to let him deal with me. And so every time I would be in church, you know, I would say, well, God, I know that priest, he can't, he doesn't have any power. But when we go up to get that, that we would get a candle crossed and they would swing the in incense. And I always felt like, oh, I'm going to gag when the incense comes. And I'm just like, so God, I need help to even have to do this because I'll be grounded the whole week if I don't go do it. I mean, I'll be in big trouble. <laughs> if I don't go. So I'm like, Lord, will you, God, will you just show me your will and will you bless me when I do this? Because I am really bored. And God put electricity from the top of my head oh, to the yeah, bottom yeah. of my toes. Yeah, yeah. And I felt him and I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ran home and I told my grandma, God touched me. He's real. Electricity went through my body. And she just looked at me like, Michelle, what are you talking about? I said, no one can talk me out of it. He's real. It happened. And I know. I know God's with me. I know. And um, so God puts marks on his people like that just from a very young age. And Tom was sharing, too, like things that happened. And it's just amazing how God has a whole army of believers that he's touched in different ways that are going to go run and touch the earth and yes. be like, great is his army that carries out his word, right? Uh, <laughs> and just tell people about Jesus. And in revivals, like the horses would turn from the bars and they would take them to church. And I just think, what if all these GPSs and cars and people are like wanting these self-driving cars? And wouldn't it just be like, God, that the self-driving cars just take them all to church and they end up getting saved? Like, what are we here for? Well, let us tell you. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And so it's a time of unveiling mysteries where God wants to, God, God is leaning over us. Not only like last night, I said, dream again, Amen. but he's saying, you know what? This is a time of unveiling mysteries. And so we got to take off our apocalyptic glasses and what everyone's saying, you know, no, you know, do this, do this. And we have to divide and let the sword be the divider and say, Lord, what do, you, what do you mean? What do, what do I do? And when we get that, where the Holy Spirit is the discerner, and we honor him, it's going to get stronger and stronger Amen. and stronger. And then there's nothing that can dupe you. There's, And you'll know the counterfeits. And right now, the Lord's in the process of revealing what is counterfeit and what is not. And because he says, like, if you're lukewarm, then I want to spew you out of my mouth because it's like how many of you you know if you have like I was saying the other night I had this fish and it, you know I went to put it in my mouth it smelled like poop oh and it was oh. bad and it was lukewarm oh, yeah. and I was like oh I could not I can't even I can't even eat it it's slimy huh? and yeah it was a it was a nice restaurant I think God wants to wean me off restaurants anyways like you know and I used to do all raw organic and and I, I just feel like I need to get back to that my friend made me a juice today and it was like health and healing and, and I was just like thank you so that's what Jesus is he says he's like the living water he's a cold yes. drink and when we drink him in it's like oh thank you God it's like nutrition to our body. We get filled, we get joy, we get outfitted. We know we're mantled, we're crowned, mm -hmm. and we know who we are. And the Father's saying, I've always wanted you, beloveds, to know who you are. It was never just for a select few. I mean, we left England so that there wouldn't be a crown around us yes. and telling us what to do and to have our freedom. And that was something God did. God made America. God loves America. God's got foundations in America. And so the stuff that's going to get shaken is the stuff that needs to go. 
not the stuff that needs to remain that's the foundation, that are the wells. And so we need to dig into the wells of revival, the right. fullness of God, the things that God blesses, do what oh, he yeah, loves, yeah, yeah. and let all the stuff that's being revealed, you know, it's like, ha-ha, God like says, I'm sitting in heaven and I'm laughing because it's all getting revealed and he's big enough to sort it out. And in the meantime, he's like, you know what? I'm going to have a church on fire. I'm going to get my bride full, fully back. I'm going to get those people who, who never want to see God move. They're, they want to see me move now. I mean, isn't that beautiful? And, and God's saying, I'm going to, you know, they're going to know me as a father. They're going to know who I really am because I've been misrepresented enough. And so I'm going to have a people who know me that will do exploits and that will who rightly show who I am, that I am love and that I came to save and give life abundantly. So in the meantime, the Christians are having an abundant life and not having any strife. And we're bringing up everyone that everyone that could fall behind and saying, hey, this is what happened when I was a baby Christian. It's OK. God loves you. Okay. Good. Amen. So there's mysteries that God wants to mm -hmm. bring and and he wants us to just be in him and he's God's so happy when we let the Holy Spirit loose and you know we need to have the fear of the Lord is coming back on the church and we're going to have a Holy Spirit heyday, honoring the Holy Spirit, honoring Jesus, honoring the Father, yeah. knowing who they are, why Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And America is going to shine like a beacon of light. Yeah. Yeah. And God has all kinds of people yeah. that, that he's been making ready. And he's yes. taking the curtains off. And you might feel shook up, but he, you feel shook up. Because he's going to redo you in a better way where you trust only him and nobody else has a hook in you. Amen. See, because if other people have a hook in you, they say, well, I've got a profit room for you. And, you know, with that profit room, you can just say what I want you to say. Come here and I'll pay you. And God's like, no, <laughs> I only go where he says and I'm not for sale because I was bought with way too of an expensive price yes, to ever compromise. We're not bowing our knee to Babylon and we're, we're seeing the wrong systems that still have the crown on it. We're going to see a full reformation where nobody has to pay a candle. You know, I grew up having, we would have to pay for prayers. You don't have to pay for prayer. The gospel is free. The gospel is the most expensive thing, the most beautiful gift, but it's free. It's, it totally is something that can change your whole life. It's the most banned book in the world. Why? Because it's dangerous. Because it'll make a whole army of free people. And God still wants that reformation to continue. He doesn't, he doesn't want, there's things that followed us from these other countries to try and um, bring, you know, separation and racism and all these different things. But God's not racist. God's not a divisionist. God loves all people. And God says he, he loves. He says there's no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, no Greek, slave, nor bond. We are all one in Christ. Right. Yeah. So God took every dividing barrier. And when he died on the cross, he not only died for our healing, our mental health. He died so that we could be one. He said, Father, make us one as you and I are one. So he died that we wouldn't have all these different divisions. And if there's a division in a church, then you know what? It needs to be worked out. Right? It needs to be worked out. Otherwise, sometimes the grace is ended and God kicks you out like an eagle. He says, you know, you wouldn't grow up and you, you wanted to hang on to the old so much that I've got... And so he has a honeymoon time for us for a period where he just nurtures us and our nest is so soft. And that's what the eagle does. She puts feathers in the nest and she puts everything to make it so soft and cuddly for the little eaglets. And she feeds them every day the best food she can get. 
she'll even not eat herself so she can give them the food. But then they start getting big and they get really loud and she's like, it's time to go. <laughs> it's time. So she begins to shake up the nest and pull out the feathers and she begins to bring sticks and rocks and they're like, oh, this is not, this is bumpy in this nest now. And um, the mating of eagles is beautiful too because when the the female eagle, the only one male that gets her is the one that can catch her and it they take rocks and drop them so the other, the male eagle has to catch the rock because she says, if you can't catch my baby falling from a nest or my eggs falling from a nest, you can't have me. <laughs> so she's like, so they compete and they drop rocks and they do free falling. So when you look at eagles, I live on the river, so we have lots of eagles that are amazing to look at. And they'll, you'll see them almost free falling. They wrap their claws together and... And then the other day I saw a miss, you know, kind of, it's kind of like a missile, but it was a miss, you know, but she let him try again. And I didn't see that part because my car was moving, but I was like, bless them, Lord, <laughs> bless their mating. But so then, you know, the female eagle, she throws them out of the nest and the dad, and then they catch them if they fall and get underneath them, but they teach them how to fly and build their own nests wow. so that they can multiply and, and not be, nice. you know, distinct. In how do you say that? Extinct. Extinct. Okay. extinct. And so God doesn't want us becoming extinct or an island to ourselves. And so nature tells a lot about how God wants yeah. things to, and it's peaceable, it's pure, it's easy to be entreated, and it's, it's well with your soul. When God does something, mm, yes. you know, even if you have to fly, you're like, you know, I needed that. I needed that little push out of the nest because I never would have been there. Right? right? Yes. If we never strengthen our muscles, we won't have to stand. So if we don't ever get a bad report or something, then we, we're not going to grow. We'll just be like, will you pray for me? <laughs> and we're like, we're like, you know, God's going pray for yourself. Do you know your hands are like anointed? Put your hand on your head and start proclaiming, I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And yes, sometimes we do we need prayer. We need other people to pray for us. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, beloveds, you have anointing in your hand. God lives in you. And we're going to grow up and we're going to show up and we're going to turn the world upside down like the people in the Bible did and evangelize the whole world. And God saved some people that are missionaries to America. There's some people here that are were called from day one to America. And they haven't left. They haven't been there. They actually have laid down their lives for this country. And God's giving them special agent instructions, secret instructions, mysteries to do in the right time. And so God has this all planned out Amen. and he loves us and he says it's going to get good. Amen. It'll get bad for a little bit and then it's going to get better and it's going to change. Our curtains are going to be ripped off. There are going to be things that get shook up, but it's so that we don't hang on to theology because, you know, how, do, how many of you know the, the moves before persecute the new coming moves? And you're like, how could they do that? They got persecuted by the last one and then they pushed forward. And so God's got a theology changing angel and he wants us, you know, like Jim said, you can either go the hard way or you can go or you can laugh at the things that you can just let go. Like let God move you and change you into who he wants you to be, a new wineskin, able to hold you know, so much wine. You're going to hold so much wine because you're going to dump it out on others. And so he wants you to stretch and be able to grow and to be able to mold, not for other people, not for other people controlling you, but for God. Amen. When you know you're in his hands and he's in control, it's the safest place to be. You can go to sleep in the middle of a boat where there's a storm because Jesus is there. Amen. 
And so he wants us to know that. He wants us to trust him. Amen. Right. I think that's it. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a mighty God. I mean, uh, a while back, um, I went to the VA and they checked my blood and my PSA was to the roof. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, my wife and I were getting ready to come to church. You know, when you put God first, he puts you first. You know, so anyway, the uh, doctor calls me up and says, uh, Mr. Mendoza, your PSA, you're all right. You don't, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, and I just want to praise that. You know, and the thing is, that when you said it to you, the Holy Spirit just, I want to share something that happened to me about 25 years ago, I guess it was. I was at a church, I was at a conference, as a matter of fact, and uh, uh, the head pastor is, I want everybody to stand up who's being called to preach. I just stand up. I just kept sitting there and sitting there and then, all of a sudden, this lady pokes me in the back, said, sir, aren't you going to stand up? All my friends stood up. I never stood up, you know. And I just kept sitting there. <laughs> I just kept sitting there. So she poked me again. She said, sir, aren't you going to stand up? I said, for what? I mean, call her do anything. I said, I'm here to serve God. That's it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's, I said, I just want to serve him. That's it. So anyway, so third time she poked me. I said, okay. So finally, I stood up, and all of a sudden, it seemed like there were windows of heaven just I mean, it was so intense. I mean, just like, why, like, what you, you know what I'm talking about? It would, I've never felt anything like that, you know. And so, when the Lord had called me, I says, you know, because uh, if he's called me, he's going to equip me. You know, he taught me how to do a sermon. Nobody else who's better than him, you know, because nobody taught me. He did, you know. So, like I said, if he's called you, he's going to equip you. I just want to share that, you know, because like I said, that, I mean, it was so intense. It's just like the windows of heaven just opened up. Am I right? It's awesome, isn't it? It's just, it's a feeling like, you know, when you get saved, you know, it's it's like that. But but when that thing is like, you know, I mean, it's like fire. I mean, it's like, oh, my God, really? You know, you know, when you call it. Anyway, that's all I want to share. Praise God. Hallelujah. How I many know we're blessed? Amen. You know, my Bible says, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now, when I say that, most people think about finances. Here's one. Here's one. <laughs> you see, you feel that? How many felt that? Just me? Father, I thank you for fresh oil than you right now. That is Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, we have an endless supply. Any area you, you learn to release your faith, you have an endless supply. Mm -hmm. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Whether it's joy, whether it's love, whether it's peace, whether it's kindness, whether it's meekness, gentleness, faithfulness, all the fruits of the Spirit, all the gifts of the Spirit. When you learn to release your faith in the words of wisdom, words of knowledge, you'll always have them in everything you do. Discerning a spirit. How about releasing your faith in working of miracles, the gifts of healings? And it all comes down to the place of learning to release your faith and not being sensitive to the outside stuff, but what he's telling you on the inside. Because when you submit to the inside, it releases authority over the outside. If I submit my outside to my inside, I choke the anointing of my life. I choke his supply. You have a healing gift in you. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you start doing that and when you pray for people and you don't see them healed and you let the cares of what they think choke you from doing it again, you, your, your gift will be stagnant, although you have it. In other words, you have full release of the anointing in your life unless you don't think so. 
because my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And you have a treasure, this, we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency and the power may be of God, not of us. So there's that place of recognizing I have an endless supply of God's ability in each one of us. That's how you're created. When he said, out of your innermost mingle flow of rivers of living creative power, but this are created, living water, but this he spoke to the Holy Ghost. When the enemy comes in, period, like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against it. And see, and I go, I thank you. <laughs> And I can flood my atmosphere. And when people are sensitive, it floods their atmosphere when I'm here. Because I'm not here on my own, I'm, on, I'm here on assignment on his accord. Hallelujah. So learn to release your faith in all the promises of God. We've been talking about getting dressed up with the abilities of heaven becoming a partaker of his divine nature in his last couple of days. And so there's that place where you have an endless supply of his anointing in your life. You lack nothing. And those that are around you call things that are not as though they are and frame them up into what Father's word says about them and they will fulfill their callings also. And if the enemy has sidelined them, it's just like I break, I pulled down all the words, prayed or spoken over every person and every in this room and every person related to every person in this room. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind up, I break off all witchcraft, I bind, I bind and break, and I bind up every word prayed or spoken over them that's not of God. And every every pharmacia assignment, I break it off every person's families represented here right now. In Jesus' name, I pull down those words, release them and let them go. Now, Father, I thank you for releasing your healing creative power. I release the healing creative power of God in every person at the sound of my voice in, in these people's families. In the name of Jesus, cross the Nazareth, I receive them whole, set free, on fire, totally changed, rearranged and fulfilling your purpose, Father, for their lives. Father, I receive your dreams manifested in all of our families fully in the name of Jesus, cross of Nazareth. I thank you, Father, for so we receive them all one with you, walking, living, having their being on earth as they are in heaven. And when they move, move to heaven, it's well done, that good and faithful servant. So I thank you, I receive the intercessors intercede for our families fully. We receive an intercession accomplished and everybody in full spiritual stature, fulfilling their callings, being, becoming a doer of the word and the fullness thereof. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for our Father. Amen. 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 So don't look at people in, in the realm of the past, look, them in the, look at them in the realm of the future. As your Father God, who calls those things that are not as though they are. What you're doing when you pray like this is you're agreeing with him. Abraham was the father of many nations from the foundations of the world. The father refused to look at the idiosyncrasies. He just spoke life to him and had patience for him to come in agreement with the plan of God. And when he came in agreement, he got what Father said. And Father looked at your life when you had MS, knowing the other side, mm -hmm. all excited about it, and he just loved you on through it, and all of a sudden, bam, mm -hmm. he's up and running. Yeah. Glory to God, heal my MS. Amen, amen, amen. And so whatever you're going through, trust. Lead down to your own understanding. Yes. Commit your ways. Yeah. Rest in him. And he'll bring it to pass. Because you are a victorious bunch. Yes. Amen? Ha ha. He he. And what's the next one? Holy holy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Father, we give you praise for what you've been doing in God's living room, Father. We just love you. We thank you. You're so incredibly awesome. And you're delicious. <laughs> see, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> so taste and see, he's delicious. I've never said that one before, but I sure would like it. You know, sometimes you say something for the first time and you don't forget it. The Lord is delicious. <laughs> he is tasty. He's also the most high. <laughs> so if you want to get high, you better hang out with him. You'll lose your blues for sure. <laughs> I've been happy, I've been sad. I've been bad, but now I'm glad. <laughs> that he brought me through. Now I'm singing yippee i yo ki yay <laughs> He's got lots for me to do. <laughs> so, Father, we just thank you for every person in this room. We receive every one walking in their mantles that you've mantled each one of us with. We acknowledge the mantle that you've given each one of us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, <laughs> uh, thank you for it, Lord. Mm. You feel that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> say, everybody say, Father, Father I, receive I receive the mantles that you have for me of walking in your love and serving your people. Serving you. Serving you fully. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. Father, we give you all the praise. What you're about to do with us? <laughs> See, he's giving up mantles in this place right now. Come and share what you're seeing if you want. Thank you for it, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Lift your hands to heaven. Fruit. Fire. I thank you, Jesus. Fresh off, fresh on it. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Say, I acknowledge the calling of my life. I receive it. Fully activated, fully activated and released in power in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. And I just see that people's crowns, like I, I kept seeing a tipped crown and that 
like the Lord is straightening my crown. He's straightening crowns and giving crowns in this room, giving mantles, giving clothing. But also there's like a holiness in the room of, of a reverence that we would never lose that intimacy, our first love with Jesus, to lose our crown. Our crown is what, when Jesus returns, we're going to cast our crowns and worship him again and again and again. And we're going to want to just throw our crown again and again and again to him. So in this earth, he's putting that jealousy and that love and the fear of the Lord in this room right now mm -hmm. and on the online to have your crown placed back the right way and through what is going on and that you would just reverence him by never losing who he made you to be, who you are, the authority that he gave you to walk in. I just sense that false humility is like leaving. That false humility, that religious spirit has to go because when we know we're crowned in authority, it's for Jesus. It's for worship. It's for the future. And the Lord's telling us himself, don't lose it. I see blue mantles of royalty and red ones of authority and the blood of Jesus. When you wear his robes of red, it's bringing the blood of Jesus, the authority of God to a situation, the redemption of the land to a situation. The blue is bringing up the people into the royal priesthood, a holy diadem, the, the um, Melchizedek order. God wants to dress his people. He says, now you are a royal priesthood. A holy nation and God doesn't want us to feel naked in, in that hour in those last days he wants us dressed for our best yes. and no one can take it and when uh, I want to see Joseph but Joshua appeared in heaven and he appeared in filthy rags. The Lord said, what new clothes on him? This is in the Old Testament. So we can appear before the Lord, and surely we can get our new clothes. <laughs> A new wardrobe and get dressed. Because that's how the Lord looks at things. He says, you know, you might feel like, you know, the filthiness of sin or the things that, other people have done where you just feel soiled or spotted or wrinkled but God says no you're mine and I love you mm -hmm. and because you come to me in that meekness and love and humility for me I'm gonna clothe you in garments of splendor I'm gonna take those spotted clothes off and I'm gonna make you a pure bride who can stand at my side who will have fire and that fire for my desire will bring fire to the nations. Let God clothe you because he doesn't only want to just give a crown. He wants to give an, a, a scepter of his authority. Can I read? Hallelujah. Jesus. Here. Just have a I just keep coming back to this ever since worship tonight in Ephesians 1. Even as in his love he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own. He picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy, consecrated, set apart for him, blameless in his sight, ever above reproach before him in love. For he foreordained us, destined us, mm. planned in, a, in love for us to be adopted, to be revealed as his own children. Revealed. Yes. Mm. And last night during the worship, I felt uh, just such an intimacy with Father. And all of a sudden, I was picked up in the spirit 
and I realized I was in the hands of the Father. Mm. And he was lifting me up, just like Abraham offering up Isaac. And I said, Lord, I thought Jesus took the place of Isaac. And he said to me, he said, no, you, you, you give your life for me because I gave my life for you. I have a new purpose for your life since the foundation of time. And I knew at that point, all of a sudden, this peace just filled me just like a, an establishment of who I am for this next phase in America and in my life. And tonight is God is actually revealing that. He's actually putting that upon each of you as well. And he's putting us forward. For he foreordained us, destined us, planned in us in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent so that we might be to the praise and the commendation of the glorious grace, the favor and mercy which he also freely bestowed on us in the beloved his love, his divine grace that allows there to be change, spiritual change is now being bestowed on us in the beloved. That's what's being bestowed on us as they're talking about the mantles, as they're talking about the scepters. As they're talking, God is giving us a greater grace by the Holy Spirit. Caris, a new, it's, it's his love being revealed for kingdom change. That is what's being put within us right now and clothed upon us by the Spirit of God. In him we have redemption, deliverance and salvation through his blood, the remission and forgiveness of our offenses, our shortcomings and trespasses. So all that you're feeling about, who am I to do this? That's all forgiven. In accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor, which he lavished upon us. It doesn't just like drip it drops. It's he lavishes on us. Right now it's like a waterfall. He's lavishing it upon us and every kind of wisdom and understanding, practical insight and prudence, making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will, of his plan, of his purpose. And it is this, in accordance with his good pleasure, his merciful intentions, which he had previously purposed and set forth in him, he planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on the earth. Consummation. Consummation. He is now making heaven in us. You are now a sign and a wonder. You are now a burning bush. You are now his presence resting upon you to be a sign and a wonder. To speak through you, for him to speak through you, just like he spoke through that bush to Moses. He will now be speaking through you. So you just let him speak through you. It's what the Father wants to speak through you. It's what the Father wants to reveal through you as his fire of his presence rests upon you it doesn't consume you but it's resting there and it's burning stronger 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 in fact it used to be on the inside now it's on the outside it's consuming all of you that's what's going on tonight that is what's going on tonight I'm good unless you wanted me to read on I will yeah just get a couple more <laughs> okay. Well, the things that have things on the earth. In him we were also made God's heritage and portion. He obtained an inheritance for which we have been foreordained, chosen and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and the design of his own will. So that we who first hoped in Christ, who first put our confidence in him and have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. From here on, we live for the praise of your glory. For now, we don't live for ourselves. We live for you and for the praise of your glory and for your purposes. I no longer live unto myself. I now live, Lord God, you live in through me for the purpose and the praise of your glory. Hey. In him you also have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings, the gospel of your salvation, have believed in, adhered to, and relied on him, were stamped with the seal of the long-promised Holy Spirit. Keep going. That spirit is, that, is the guarantee of our inheritance, the first fruits, the pledge, and the foretaste, the down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption, and are acquiring 
complete possession of it. That's what he's putting on us now. He's having us walk into the full completion of the possession of what he's put upon us since the beginning of time. To the praise of his glory. He gets all the glory. He gets all the honor. He gets all the praise for it. Lord, we give it all to you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Father. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Boy, we're just coming in line with what the kingdom of God, you get all the glory. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord, that your government is a family and you've called us to be a part of your family. Whoa, one with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to do what you want to have done on earth as it is in heaven. For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints and the people of God, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. The Father of glory. Wow. For I always put to the God the, the, the for I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the Father of glory. He's gonna father you in the glory. Wow. That he may grant you, he's gonna father us into glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, into the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Boy, let me say that again. Whoa. For I, I always pray to the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom. He's going to grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and a spirit of insight into the mysteries and the secrets and the deep and intimate knowledge of him. You've been wondering, where is he? 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 And it's been, a, it's been like a... Um, it's been like a mystery. The truth is, is the Father wants to reveal the mystery of who he is to you by his spirit and the knowledge of him and deep, intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Eyes of your heart. Yes, the eyes of your heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, that I may see you. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. So that you can know and understand the hope to which he's already called. He already knows it. But now it's up to us to discover it. That you may know. That you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. And how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. And for you and me and his set apart ones. I have the you and me. But we're a part of his set apart, set apart ones. So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age but in this and in this world, but also in the age and the worlds which are to come. He has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church. A headship exercised throughout the church, which is his body. The fullness of him. Boy, the body, the fullness of Christ is in me and you in the body, which is in his body, the fullest of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete who fills everything everywhere with himself. Yes. yes. In his body, which is you and I, I'm going to read that again, which is in his body. I'm going to add that, that you are in his body. So this is for you and me. In you and me, in the, as his body, he wants the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete, who fills everything everywhere with himself. And you, he made alive. (laughs) He wants to make us alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Woo, I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, I feel good. No, 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 no. No, I should right now. No, no, no. I feel right. The sugar is my son now. Ooh, I feel good. So good. 
I've got you. Yes. Hey. Hallelujah. Woo. That's why they call me the Robin Williams of prophets. I like. You never know what comes out of me. I'd like to welcome you all to reality. Yeah, that's right. Woo. Yeah. That's the fullness of him. And you have he made alive. And you he has made alive when you were dead. In yesterday. Because today's a new day. Today's your life. Today you're alive. And so what he was putting on us is his mantles, his making us alive in him. He wants us to walk in the new identity. He wants to shed all that feeling of less than or what's going on, where's happening. And said, all shed. He wants you to walk in that new identity of who you are. We've been doing it, but the battle has been heavy. Yeah. So don't let your yeah, the, battle, the battle has made our flesh weary. Let it not but be this is who Christ. you really are. This who you really are. So don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. Don't let it be distressed. Amen. His Father's about to give you his very best. Amen. When you make it your only quest. You will enter the fullness of his rest. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Just a closer walk with you. Thank you, Jesus, that you followed through. You paid the price for me to become right. Thank you, Jesus. I have a brand new sight. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everything that he put inside of you and intended is to be released now. That's right. Climax of the you're, ages. You're entering into a new season. This is the Climax season. Climax of the ages. Climax of the ages. <laughs> She's what he's got made it. you for and created you for. Uh, I sing that one too. Christian <laughs> sugar. He knows all those songs. That's what I do. I do eight. I'm Tom the Music Man. I do 869 songs. Everything from Golden Oldies to the Beatles, Western hymns, Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, show tunes, big band love songs, old rock and roll, Broadway hits. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, even some Hawaiian. You know, they sing it, I did it my way, but can you sing it? I did it his way. Yeah, I did it his way would be the way to do it, for sure. Yeah, and what's beautiful is, is that music has had such a rich part in our souls, all of us. And so even for people who haven't walked with God, that is a door for the Lord. So I go in as a music therapist, and the Lord all of a sudden, he just did this yesterday, it was, it was profound. I'd never been there before, didn't know anybody there, and uh, the staff that was there was looking at me like, kind of like, oh, why do we want you? And I sat down, and I, and, and I didn't let it get to me. Instead, I said, Lord, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Yep, yep, I, I, just, I just refused to take on that mantle of them being poopy to me. And instead, I just said, Lord, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I can't wait to wait how you're going to show them who you are. And I sat down and all of a sudden I had the most diverse. There was about six people in the room and God gave me six of the most diverse songs mm. from classical to Elvis to new rock and roll. And with each person, they said, oh, I love that. And they were all singing along. And the workers all of a sudden start using their phone. And of course, I'm doing, you know, Elvis blows my soul and all this stuff. And they're going around and they're taking pictures. Aww. All of a sudden, the staff is, is realizing that the people who they haven't been able to get to smile are smiling, singing, coming alive. Mm -hmm. And God's using it. Then they looked at me and they said, how did you get into this? Aha, there's my door. Yeah. See, I'm not allowed to proselytize. But the minute they ask me, how did you get into this? Then I can tell them. I was approached by Tom Selleck's agent. I was supposed to be the next Dick Van Dyke. Wow. I'm a character actor. I can. That's why I do all these different impressions. And then just before I entered into it, whoop, MS. Wow. 
And I found the Lord in such a powerful way, wow. his healing presence. I know what it's like to be in your wheelchairs. I've been there. And it turned into ministry time. <laughs> <laughs> he wants us to shift the environments wherever we go. And to carry your atmosphere. Yes. And to carry your atmosphere in there, don't let them change you. You change them. And that's, and that's really why you don't let your heart be troubled. Yes. Because you have to carry your atmosphere. Yes. So after I walked out, all of a sudden, the owner wasn't there of the, of the facility. And all of a sudden, he called me up and he said, can I get you set up for the other places too? <laughs> I'm pretty booked. <laughs> But it's being that, that who you are, you know, that, that the circumstances of what you do does not dictate who you are. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The circumstances of what you do for a living or what I have to do right now, going to the store or whatever, does not dictate who I am. Mm -hmm. I go in and shift what's there because of what's inside of me. That's right. Yeah. You're an atmosphere shift. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So uh, last night as the Lord was offering up as a sacrifice. I'm going to read that verse again. This verse just keeps coming back to me, coming back to me, coming back to me. It says, who he foreordained, destined, planned in love for us to be revealed as his own children. This is the season of him revealing us. He wants to reveal who we are in him and who he is in us. He's revealing us. And I thought, and I'm, I'm, I'm like an adopted child, but he's making me his own. He's saying, this is my kid. And then all of a sudden, last night during the worship, the Lord took me back to event, to event upon event, uh, event, upon event in my life where the enemy tried to kill me or things did, or tried to destroy me. And the Lord said, he tried to do that because of what I'm about to do through you now. The enemy knows, but he can't stop it. <laughs> he can't stop it. He didn't get out of bed early enough. Right, that's right. So... Uh, that whole thing about being a secret agent came back to me again, you know. We're his secret agents. And now he's now he's about to have us revealed because now wow. he's raising up his army to go. Wow. The Josephs are about to come out of wow. their place of hiding. Yes, girl. So in the middle of the service, I'm getting this image of a stealth fighter. Yeah. And I'm all about aeronautics since I was a teenager. I was in the Air Force and... Hey, bring it, uh, 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 bring that up here. Get on a bike, and throw it in the pulpit, like with Pastor Tom. A little closer. There you go. So I get this image in the middle of the teaching, and, and I don't recall precisely when it was, but but it was a stealth fighter. And I'm going, okay, this is not something that normally just pops up in my brain. Even though I can identify with that, Lord shows you so many times the things that really you really identify with, right? And so for some people, it might be curtains, but for me, it's, you know, aeronautics because that's my, been my whole, you know, young adult life. And, um, and I wasn't on camera, but it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, I was in Civil Air Patrol and then I was in the Air Force and I've always been associated with planes somewhere, somehow, someplace, right? And so the stealth fighter comes up and I'm thinking, you know, uh, okay, a stealth fighter, all right, that's cool. And, and, and then I realized, well, you know, the words came out of me, still fight. Oh, that's right. You were just talking about getting out of caves and people that have been hidden all these years, yes. Yes. right? That are, that are warriors. They are. They, they're the secret agents of God, but they are, but they have been hidden for this time, right? Yes. To be revealed. Yes. Oh, wow. And they are hidden and they are being revealed and they're, and they have, and they're formidable. These stealth fighters, uh, if you don't know what these are, they are, they're incredibly uh, capable. They are, they are the absolute best. And, and God is revealing his absolute best at this time. Come on. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. yes. And the, the Lord showed me like with intercession before about, he said, you're a stealth fighter. And it's the stealth fighters have like sonic, waves that they know how to get through before the enemy even knows what hit them. 
So the so the enemies are like, what's happening? What's happening? You know, we just we just had a hit on us. The lasers already got the target, and it's we're going down. And they don't even know because the stealth jet goes through without being seen. It's like invisible. It knows how to turn its fins and the the sound waves and get through. And that's what the Lord kept saying. Our first meeting was. The enemy tried to take you out, but God like networked us with people here. And he said, it's too late. Yay. It's too late. Yay. And Yay. now Arizona's going to turn. And there's a hinge pin for Arizona and it's going to swing wide open. And that Arizona's going to change the whole nation. Wow. And God's got a surprise for Arizona and for America to save America Yay. through Arizona. And I'm going to keep saying it because yes, yes. God said it. Amen. And it's too late. Amen. It's too late for him. You want to know how. One more thing. Hallelujah. Anyway, um, <laughs> like she said this right here, you know, um, I'm going to my revival. I mean, it's going to be, anyway, my reunion, my 50th reunion in Tucson uh, in September but I was talking to a pastor friend of mine <laughs> it's going to be a Holy Ghost a Holy Ghost reunion you know because uh, that's what we're going to turn it into for, for what they meant for evil God meant for good I want, to, I want to share that you know because that's what's going to happen I'm, that's what I'm going to go about my father's <coughs> business you know lives going to be changed we're going to set the atmosphere a friend of mine you know we're not going to let them dictate the atmosphere Atmosphere. We're going to set the atmosphere. It's going to be a Holy Ghost reunion. I'm looking forward to that. Oh God, I just... Hey, you know what? Uh, you want to know where stealth is is uh, biblical? Well, there's a number of places undoubtedly, but one in particular it says, "Had the princes of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of Glory." So when Jesus went to the cross. See, they, he made a show of them openly, continuously. <laughs> they couldn't mess with them. Here, the, here was a man that they could not seduce. They could not agitate. They could not get his heart troubled. They could not get him into distress. He stayed in the rest the whole time. And then, and then he went into stealth mode and went to the cross as a man. And the bulls of Basham, Psalm 22, gave to bottom and took him to the bowels of there and took him to hell for three days and three nights. And then all of a sudden, he came out of stealth mode and made a show of them openly. <laughs> <laughs> and took the keys of death and hell, popped out of there, gave them to all of us so we could make a show of them openly. <laughs> if we don't have to be in stealth mode. That's right. That's right. He took everything out. And so the word says, Had the princes of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hey. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey. So he, he is about to put you on display. And you got to learn to be in this place where you remain humble. Don't compare yourself with other people. Look unto yeah, Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, yeah. and swing like Tarzan and Jane. <laughs> Jane just hung on to Tarzan and went for the ride. <laughs> and that's what you're called to do with Jesus. There's <laughs> a smart woman. What did you Jesus is back. Can we call the ride with him? <laughs> hey, we're gonna have a you know I had an absolute blast tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Another glorious night. So get on the phone, invite some more people to come. If you want to sow seed, there's a basket back there. I bless all the gifts that the givers. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for multiplying that seed back to him a thousand fold in the name of Jesus. I give you a prize. If you give it, if you're on the internet, you can go to PayPal and our username is glorytime at msn.com. 
That's glory time at msn.com. And uh, hallelujah. If you're making out a check, make it out to Throne Room Ministries. So it's time to raise the dead and cast out devils. Did you know the Democrats are about to have a meeting? Oh my they're about to, to, to there's an open show of them being defeated about to take place the no I said the democrats the democrats yeah you know what a democrat is it's a demon possessed and having possessed uh, some leadership <laughs> they're about to be humble yeah the Bible says humble yourself then I may exalt you. And then, you know, if you lift your head up, you know, if you exalt yourself, you shall be humbled. So all that humble, all that exalting of yourself is bad news. <laughs> I don't want to go there. You got to let him lift you up. But if you lift yourself up, you're going down. <laughs> so don't let your hearts be troubled. <laughs> the government's going to be straightened out. Amen. The king of kings will set up his kingdom. <laughs> and you're in his body. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's going to be love or rest. <laughs> so, when you go to sleep tonight, just go across your arms, give Jesus a hug, giggle yourself out to sleep. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because it's been a good day. <laughs> it's been a good day. Last night, the Lord told me the Spirit of Truth is here. He's still here. <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we bless. We love you. Come out tomorrow night. Don't be bashful. Amen.